Hi, I'm Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, this is part two of our spin off series for the Hundred Years' War. And we're going to take in a, a look at food, you know, uh, victuals. How did they feed a medieval army? Now, if you've missed any of my previous videos, yeah, then you can find them in the playlist in the description. So, without further ado, a human being, me. I'll consume between two and four pounds of food a day, apparently. So I'm told. So if you have an army of 7,000 men, 8,000, that's a lot of food, isn't it? But actually, it's nothing until you come to a horse, right? A horse every day needs between five and 10 gallons of water. Well, that's fine. You find a river. Yeah. But then he eats... 20 pounds of food a day. So if that's 2,000 horses, that's 40,000 pounds of food a day. So you can imagine just feeding an army is blows your mind, yeah? But before I can even continue, I've got to explain to you that the weights and measures of the day, things were measured in a quart. And a quart is a, a London quart. And what it means is it's a volume, it's a quarter of a ton barrel, yeah? So if you've got wheat and it fills a quarter of a ton barrel, that's a quart. If you've got a quart of wine, it's the same kind of thing, yeah? So it's done by volume. So as we go through this, uh, instead of you being confused, you now know we're talking of a London quart, yeah? So feeding an army. Now, when I was in the British army, we had ration packs or we had the cookhouse and it was great. Medieval soldier, what would he eat for a start off? Uh, pottage was one of their main uh, food and it's basically a bubbling vegetable stew. Oats, peas, beans and barley. You might have fish pottage, you might have bacon in your pottage or you might have the whole lot in your pottage. Something I learned as a soldier, as long as you've got oatmeal in it, it basically uh, just makes everything, neutralizes a lot of the flavor, yeah? So you have to add to it. So your common or garden bowman, yeah? Bowl of pottage, he'd be well happy as long as it's nice and hot. And bread is also important. So I've just got a table I'm gonna read for you about how much food was shipped over from England for various campaigns. We've got the Gascony campaign of 1347 to, to 49. There were 12,318 quarts of wheat, 695 quarts of oats, 1,185 quarts of beans and peas. Make you go faster, yeah. Malt, 409 quarts, 2,034 tons so that's the full barrel of flour and carcasses, meat carcasses, yeah, for Gascony Campaign 936. Now your meat carcasses were salted down, yeah, so you can have salt beef, salt pork. Your fish can be smoked or even pickled, yeah, or if you're lucky and you're, you're serving near a river or the ocean, you might just get fresh fish, yeah. Now for the Brittany Campaign, uh, 5,336 quarts of wheat, and it goes on and on. But I just want to show you for the Cressy campaign here, uh, 8,027 quarts of wheat, 3,085 quarts of oats, uh, 824 full barrels of flour, and then for the, for the meat side, 2,670 uh, carcasses of meat because soldiers have to be fed well. And this is an interesting thing about the medieval times. If you're a civilian, you're gonna have meager rations. You'll get up in the morning and you'll have what's left from the night before. In the evening, you will have your bowl of pottage. You might be lucky to have bread. Don't forget in those days, bread went off very quickly. You didn't have all of the preservatives, yeah? So bread can be used as a thickening once it's gone off. There's lots of things to this, but the main important thing is a soldier needs those calories. He's got to march, and of course, he's got to fight. 
A modern soldier apparently needs 4,000 calories a day during combat. Nobody ever told me that. But apparently he gets just over 2,000 calories a day in his rations. So it shows you that uh, if you don't feed your soldier, eventually he's going to lose his, um, his energy, isn't it? But it's how on earth did this tiny little country of England manage to get all of this food across the sea? Well, first of all, you have the man in charge of your county, the sheriff, the Shire Reef. He is the guy. You'll also have commissioners who have been sent by the king and they will tell the sheriff, right, we need this, we need that. They didn't then go into the countryside like some of your Hollywood films and they steal all of the food. It's paid for, yeah? And it's paid for properly and it's paid for at the proper price at the time. And then it's gathered in that village, which is then moved to the town, which will then be moved out to the coast. And I'm gonna show you on a map in a moment just how everything radiated out from the different towns and then was picked up and taken to central areas for supply. So here's a map of England and Wales there. So collecting victuals, if you've got a farmer up here who's got plenty of sheep and they go for slaughter, let's say in Carlisle, but to get them all the way down England where there aren't very many roads, down to one of the sink ports as they call them, the meat would be no good at all. Yeah, even though it's salted down. So what happened was it would be taken from the farmer to the village, from the village to the town, then across to a harbour where a ship will take it and the ship will go to another harbour where beef or lamb or oats, you know, peas, all of these different produce have actually slowly but surely come in from York and then the boats will go down, stop again, again, until eventually these full boats are coming all the way to Sandwich here. And that's where things were gathered. Once the boats are full, then they can go across to France. It was such a fantastic system. It meant that a farmer here, yeah, or even in Wales, could actually get his supplies to a coastal town. They didn't go this way. Apparently it was too long, so it was better to take the roadway across the country and then by sea. So it was well organized and it was honorable uh, to gather all that food for the armies. It was fantastic and I read where um, noblemen knew that their comrades across the sea in France, Gascony, would be running short of food and they ensured that ships were ready and on their way so their friends didn't starve to death. It all worked. And interestingly, if a farmer sent food and it was delayed and come all the way down England, there was a problem, it was then looked at and gauged. If they figured that it wasn't gonna make the journey, the voyage, it will go rotten, they would then sell the food for consumption to the locals at a reduced price. This whole thing, it amazes me. The more I read about it, the more amazed I actually was, how complicated it was. But hey, was it that Frenchman? Mm. Or was he a Corsican who said, an army marches on its stomach? Well, I hope you enjoyed our film. If you did, give us a thumbs up and do me a favor. Share some of these films, would you? Now, if you are a subscriber, hey, thanks a million. If you're not, why not press that subscriber button and ding that bell. If you'd like to support our channel further, we now have a Patreon account, the link for which is in the description. So for now, thank you very much. Bye.